The Ukrainian military official saying soldiers in Bakhmut have been shelled by Russia more than 400 times in just the past 24 hours. And, and just look at this I'm showing here. This is new footage that we just have, aerial footage of what used to be Bakhmut. Right? It is just a completely charred out, burned out, destroyed shell of a city. And this comes as the Ukrainian sniper that we've interviewed several times on Outfront. You may remember him, Roman Trakimets. He is sharing with us some dramatic video from the trenches around Bakhmut that he has just filmed. I'm going to show it to you. I want to warn you that what you're about to see is graphic, but he did uh, want us to go ahead and share it. Uh, it's a Ukrainian soldier that has been severely wounded by an explosion, receiving life-saving medical treatment from other soldiers. Ultimately, this soldier did survive. Uh, as I mentioned, though, it's uh, difficult to watch, uh, but he felt it was important to share with you. Дайте води. У мене в рюкзаку є вода. Сколочка, ну га рука, дві руки. Тут треба пісіку. Так розрізайте, не знімайте. Стой, стой. Sam tying the tourniquet and as we said that soldier did survive. Nick Payton Walsh is out front with our coverage now on the front lines in southern Ukraine. Occupied Ukraine is aflame and evacuating its civilians. Russia's wholesale departure can't come soon enough for frontline town or a heave. This premier ravaged by Moscow, where four missiles hit on Thursday alone. Rescuers left guessing what the constant bangs mean and have done. You see people just down the road here carrying on life as per normal despite dust in the sky around us. And may not be in fact. Outgoing. Вот сюда может еще километра три стоять и все последняя линия. Тут в любое время дня и ночи. Тут не выбирают именно там в пять или в шесть. He's saying he doesn't in particular time of day when these sort of things start. Could be any time at all, frankly. As dusk falls, the sky is lit in a duel. All they can do here to stay alive is read the horizon. Some of it perhaps further south into occupied areas than a week earlier. But so much of it also very close. Dawn is often jarring. We hear a jet overhead, the slowly building, grating sound of damage moving towards you. A missile. A half million dollar KH-31, Ukrainian officials later say, lands just 700 yards away. Yeah, I was on the floor, buddy. Another blast follows. Either jet entrails or anti-aircraft fire settle to shape a Z in the air, the symbol of Russia's invasion. It is soon gone. The damage it leaves, though, isn't. This is where it hit or missed. Down here, you can get a feeling of just how massively brutal Russian firepower can be, and also how indiscriminate. I can still smell the explosive down here, and you're kind of left wondering where the obvious military target is. At the end of this road is Polohi, one of the towns Russia has said it is evacuating. We are just one mile from Russian frontline positions here, a world torn apart as Moscow tries to hold Ukraine back. Well, no more than 10 miles in that direction are the first towns that Russian occupying forces say they're going to be evacuating because of the Ukrainian counter-offensive. But look at here, the last town really held by Ukraine, absolutely battered. And so few people left here, there's little need to evacuate. Where there were once 3,000, there are 200 people trying to stay, says Raisa. Caught in these wide open spaces where a distant bang can suddenly alter life in an instant. Erin, Russian officials say they've now evacuated 3,000 individuals, civilians mostly, from the areas along the front line, potentially where Ukraine may launch its counter-offensive. Ukrainian officials say that's impacting cash withdrawals, uh, gasoline availability and also cell phone service too. And even that one particular town, Skadovs, to the west of Crimea, may have seen a lot of people leaving it recently. Most importantly, though, many Ukrainians here, I think, are bracing themselves for a night 
night of maybe more missile strikes, mm. drone strikes as well. A lot of them been intercepted by air defence over the past nights, but tomorrow for Russia, particularly important. It's Victory Day, the 9th of May. It'll be celebrated in Moscow itself, and we sadly know that Moscow tend to mark anniversaries here in Ukraine with a bid to create more bloodshed. Erin? Thank you very much, Nick, from Zaporizhia tonight. I want to go straight now to the retired Army Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. And General Hurtling, part of here what Nick's talking about, Russia evacuating 3,000 people from the front lines in Zaporizhia near where Nick is tonight due to increased shelling. Uh, they've got lines of buses. We're showing them. They're using those to transport people away. Now, Zaporizhia, of course, has been seen as a major target likely in the coming Ukrainian counteroffensive. So what do you think Russia is doing here? Well, Aaron, first of all, Zaporizhia is, a, is an entire oblast. So you're talking about uh, several hundred square kilometers. The Make no mistake, Russia is not uh, evacuating these people for humanitarian reasons. They haven't done that anywhere else. Right. Uh, what they're doing is taking people, citizens, away so that they don't help uh, the uh, incoming Ukrainian forces that are coming in. You know, it's the same thing the Nazis did in France, where they killed uh, resistance fighters. Uh, they uh, uh, moved fighters away so that they couldn't help the allies when they were coming into France and then later into Germany. So that's what they're doing. They're, they're getting rid of the population so they can't help and spot where Russians are. They can't tell the Ukrainian forces where the defensive positions are. They can't point out sniper positions. So those are the kind of things that are going on right now. Well, I think it's important to be clear, right? There is nothing humanitarian about it as you lay out. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing I wanted to ask you about, because uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner Group, is now saying his troops are getting ammunition and that they're advancing in Bakhmut. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is that, you know, you and I remember talking just days ago. He was warning he was going to pull all of his troops out of Bakhmut uh, this week uh, because they were losing and they couldn't win and they had no ammunition and no, no support, nothing from the Russian military. Now, all of a sudden, they're advancing and they've got the ammo. What do you read into that? I read into it that it is more Russian and Kremlin drama. Uh, it is political back and forth between Prigozhin, uh, the leader of the Chechen fighters, Shoigu, the defense minister, and Gerasimov, the leader of the Russian military, all centered around Putin. Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is this has been dysfunctional now for almost 18 months. Yes. These kind of personalities have been at play. And even on the, on the eve of a grand uh, uh, offensive by the Ukrainian forces, they're still screwing around trying to figure out who's in charge and who the leader is. None of this is military activity the way professional soldiers see it. All right. Thank you very much, General, as always. Thank you, Aaron.